You. You were the driving force of the 1230, weren't you? Yeah, yeah uh, I was. I, I saw the 1230 in the trash barrel, and I said, uh, I can make some m money out of the... Uh, who are you? Uh, where am I? Is it break time yet? Huh? Huh? Now you're participating in a special work furlough program worked out between Data Products and the Chino State Prison officials. Isn't that correct? Yeah, what's it to you? Now, Alan, would you tell us why John Cappadici is so angry with you? So angry, in fact, that he's put a contract out on your life? I'm Ed Badley. I'm Spike Wallace. I'm Dinah Sawyer. Those stories and more tonight on 60 Minutes. The LZR 1230, a high quality 12 page per minute laser printer developed by Data Products Corporation of Woodland Hills, California. That's the story today. However, few people outside the company know the true story on how the 1230 evolved. Tonight, we'll show you the shocking details behind the evolution of a printer. Our story begins here behind the Data Products facility known as Building 19. Farley Farfel, maintenance engineer for the building, was piling garbage into a large dumpster behind the building when he noticed that someone had dumped about 500 copies of a strange looking device into the dumpster. Being an avid collector of junk, he spent the rest of the week emptying the dumpster of the boxes and trying to find people who wanted them. At first, there were no takers. No one knew what to do with the strange boxes, but that was part of their charm. People began to be very creative in deciding what the boxes were and were not to be used for. You, you were the driving force of the 1230, weren't you? Yeah, yeah uh, I was. I, I saw the 1230 in the trash barrel, and I said, uh, I can make some m money out of the, uh, who are you? Uh, where am I? Is it break time yet? Huh? At first he couldn't even give them away, but gradually they gained acceptance as vending machines. Footrests, flower pots, and then came that fateful day in November hey, 19. Are you gonna ask any more questions on yeah. the trial? Give me a break. Right, right. it's a break time. Yet. Hi, mom. This is my big chance. I could be somebody. I can be. I can. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, oh, 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 ah. And then came that fateful day in November of 1985 which shaped the destiny of the 1230 forever. The events you're about to see occurred exactly as we're about to present them to you. We've reenacted those historic moments so that you too can witness the birth of a printer. The delivery room for that birth is contained right here in the heart of data products. 
I am trying to solve this problem. It has really been pissing me up. I can tell you that right now. I'm so hungry I could eat a yak. Just cut off the horns and clean the behind. Oh, we have been working a lot through lunch lately. What is the time that it is? It's nearly 12.30. Let's fix something to eat. I need something to eat. I've got diverticulitis. The, the doctor tells me I should never miss a meal. My stomach starts to hurt real bad. And then I get real bad gas. You know, my mom, my, my mom says there's only one thing in life. She says, my, she says, you only have your health once, she says. tossing my cookies, I'll be telling you. I am trying to calculate the square root of infinity to the 32nd power, but I have a bug in my program somewhere, and to be seeing the whole program, I would be needing a printer. Oh, well, well, why don't you print it out on this thing? What a brilliant idea! You are not as stupid as you look. You couldn't possibly be. Oh, it is wonderful. I will be kissing your oozing pustules. I'll be telling you that right now. Oh, with exciting times like this, who is requiring enemas? What should we call it? What time is it? It's 12, 12.30. Let us be calling it the 12.30. And that was the beginning of a legend, but only the beginning. The rest is well-known fact. We took our cameras into Data Products to talk to J.P. Jones, product manager for the 1230, to get his side of the story. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, I didn't make that decision. It was not my fault. Look, look, it says on page, uh, page 892 of the LZR 1230 bug list that that, yeah, volume one. Volume 6? How the hell did you get Volume 6? I just got it today. Look, I can't... No, not Volume 4. Volume 1. Look, I can't... Look, I gotta go, all right? No, I, got, I gotta go. I got... All right, goodbye. All right, gotta... Hold all my calls. Tell everybody I'm busy. Ted Zajac holding on line 1. Tell Ted I'm busy. Ron Iverson holding on line 2. Tell Ron I'm busy. Bob Wallstrom holding on line three. Tell Bob I'm busy. John Leggett holding on line four. Tell John I'm busy. Jack Davis holding on line five. Tell Jack I'm busy. Graham Tyson holding on line six. We tell Graham I'm busy. Your wife holding on line seven. Tell my wife I'm busy. Your psychiatrist holding on line eight. Oh my God, thank God, Dr. Taylor, you called. Oh my God, I've been having those terrible nightmares again. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, last night. I dreamed I was surrounded by printer salesmen. They all looked like hungry dogs and I was dressed up like a pork chop. No, 
Oh, I don't remember what kind of vegetables they were serving. Jesus. We oh, hold on. I got eight other calls holding. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Hello, Ted. It's not my fault. Iverson did it. Hello, Ron. It's not my fault. Wallstrom did it. Hello, Bob. It's not my fault. Leggett did it. Hello, John. It's not my fault. Davis did it. Hello, Jack. It's not my fault. Tyson did it. Hello, Graham. It's not my fault. My wife did it. Hello, hello, honey. It's not my fault. The dog did it. Hello, Dr. Taylor. Oh, thank God. So what do you think? You think I'm crazy? I'm nuts? What? What's going on here? No! No, my mother never dressed me up as raw meat. Yeah, all right. So what, am I crazy or what? What's the story? Yeah, what the hell do you want? Yeah, I, look, am I, no, will you hold on a second? Yeah, really, hold on. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, sure, anytime. My door is always open to members of the press. So am I nuts or what? Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Am I crazy or what? All right, all right, all right. So I'll take the medication. Jeez. So there you have it. The printer that traces its heritage to a trash dumpster. It has managed to pull itself up from the slime to become the hottest laser printer on the market. So the next time you see the data products LZR 1230, remember that you saw it here on 60 Minutes. As the holidays come around, it's nice to know that even if something breaks, it won't break you. If you shop with the American Express card, because until December 31st, we will extend the free repair period of the manufacturer's warranty. In fact, we'll double it, up to an extra year. Just in case the things you buy aren't all that they're cracked up to be. But be sure to register your purchases with Buyer's Assurance and use the American Express card. Dick Venn, currently serving a 10-year sentence at the men's prison facility at Chino, California, is participating in a special work furlough program worked out between data products and the prison officials. By day, he is Dick Venn, director of supplies at the Chatsworth, California facility. By night and on the weekends, he's known as Dick Vengeance, leader of a tough prison gang. Tonight, we'll tell his story. We're here at the Data Products Supplies Facility in Chatsworth, California. But we're here to tell you a story about the men's prison facility at Chino, California. What do Data Products Supplies and the men's prison facility at Chino have in common? Plenty. We're here to tell you a story about a man who was convicted for illegally exporting SI-480 cartridges, LB ribbons, and LZR supplies to Iran and Nicaragua. It is reported that he made millions in the illegal export business before the long arm of the law caught up with him. Now you are participating in a special work furlough program worked out between data products and the Chino state prison officials, aren't you? Uh, yeah, what's it to you? Well, what do your fellow hardened criminals think of this program? Well, naturally, they think it's a great program. They all want to get a piece of the action. I wouldn't let those scum work for me. Well, what do you think of the program? Another stupid question. I think it's a great program. Gets me out of the slam for eight hours. Great recreational area. Great scenery. I love it. It's terrific. Well, let's try another tack here. Uh, when did you first get involved in the long arm of the law? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about that either. You know, if your story could help one other person avoid the same problems that you ran into, you really could be helping to take a big bite out of crime. Do you think it might help me at my next parole board uh, hearing? Well, uh, it, it couldn't hurt. Okay. Uh, I think I'll sing like a bird. Good. Uh, it kind of started last year mm -hmm. when the Ayatollah Khomeini gave us a call from, uh, you know, Iran. Yeah. Decided he wanted to uh, corner the Red Hot latest laser supplies and LB supplies. Right. SI-480 supplies. Yeah. Hey, good idea. 
shipping a few goods. I happen to have, by the way, a little extra stock last year. Money's rolling in. Next thing I know, I got a call from the uh, Contras, you know, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Oh. And uh, turns out these SI-480 pellets are they're great for finger painting in between the bomb blasts. So a uh, little extra money keeps rolling in. Things are going good. Next thing I know, there's a press conference in Iran. Hmm. Knock on my door one day. I'm doing 10 big ones at Chino. But I'll tell you. Those days are behind me. No more, no more illegal exporting for us. Well, no, sir. No more, no more Iran. No more Nicaragua. But, but you know, I have to be honest with you. I've really noticed that you've got quite an ample stock here. As a matter of fact, someone might even say that you're you're overstocked. Uh, overstocked? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think you've seen the, uh, the latest uh, FY88 forecast for printers. By the way, approved by JD himself. Uh, this ain't ample stock. I, I'm just barely able to make it with this. And uh, by the way, again, I ran Nicaragua's out of it. Hey, man. Uh, uh, hey, like, like, uh, hey, man, like, uh, hey. Like, uh, hey, what are you going to do, man? Do you know we're on television here? Television? Yeah, television. Yeah, man, like, that's the box with a picture on it, man. Like, yeah, ah, television. Man. Like, like, uh, wow. Television? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, don't need, we don't need you around here. Where am I, man? Where, where you know, some of those last man, payments like, that, like, that came in were, well, were, yeah. were cash, man, they were drugs, you know. I was like drugs. trying to we, we ship this most box, of the, and, and I can't, most of the drugs I can't out even here, read this. I don't know hey, where to hey, ship this, man. Hey, like, where do you ship this uh, shit? I, I don't know what this, this is. Man. This is a frame-up. Hey, like, like, uh, man, like, yeah. like, where do you want me to ship guards. it, man? Guards. Guards. Like, where? Like, guards. Like, guards. You know, I got a lot of enemies, but fortunately, those no. things are all behind sure. us. Sure. Right. No more problems. Illegal export. No more problems. Well, there you have it, folks. An example of how a large company helps the downtrodden. An example of how a large company will reach out to help someone. An example of how a large company gets suckered into hiring scum. And you've seen it here on 60 Minutes. He is the party. So go, Spuds, go! This is a story of organizational conflict. It is a story of how two men work together to resolve their conflict. It is a story of how that conflict was finally resolved. We're standing here in front of Data Products Building Number One, the birthplace and home of the LB series of BAM printers. Normally, the product manager would stay very close to the product he is managing. However, in this case, that would be very dangerous business indeed. Dangerous business for one man in particular. Alan Taft, product manager for the LB series of BAM printers, has been in hiding for months and lives with around-the-clock armed guards. The reason for his life of fear? This man. John Capodici, alias the Capo. Capodici, reputed underworld boss, recently told the House Committee on Un-American Affairs that he made his fortune selling computer printers. A very unlikely story considering the lavish lifestyle he enjoys. Capodici is a quiet man, quiet until the discussion turns to the subject of Alan Taft. On that subject, he is most vocal. The Capo refused to be photographed, However, he did agree to talk to us over the phone. What you are about to hear is an excerpt from that phone conversation. Mr. Capodici, we have it on reliable sources that you put a contract out on Alan Taft. Is that true? Miss, I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that it may incriminate me. Then you're not denying it. Well, I just refuse to answer the question. It might incriminate me. Word has it that you blew your top one day after Alan Taft announced the LB's market readiness no, no. for the 23rd time no. and then called you to tell you that he was only kidding. No, no. I refuse to answer that question. It might incriminate me. Word has it that you ordered your men to get Taft at any cost. 
It is said that you wanted him to sleep with the fishes. Well, it, it is said that you were furious because you had lost another big deal and that you were not going to let him do that to you again. Well, hey, what would you do? I mean, you know, the guy is, you know, I, I refuse to answer the question. It is said that you ordered his house burned down and salt scattered on the ashes. Well, it wasn't salt. And at a recent a party in New York, you were quoted as having said the following. What's I'm that? going to get Alan Taft and rip his nose off. No, I I'm never going said to cut that. his arms off and beat him over the head with them no, until he's unconscious. I'm going, to pull his arms off. I'm going to tie raw meat to his legs and feed him to the dogs. I'm going to rip his heart out with my bare hands and shove it down his throat. Doesn't really sound that bad. I'm going to tear his guts out and strangle him with his own large intestines. Ooh, I, I like I'm going that. to pump 50 shells into his skull. 50, I think. I'm going to Probably chain concrete it. blocks to his feet and throw him in the river. I'd like and after I'm done having fun, I'm okay. going to kill him. Yes? Did you say those things at the party? Well, I uh, don't remember, but I don't think I should answer the question, ma'am, because it might incriminate me. Thank you, Mr. Capadisi. You've been most helpful. So, uh, by the way, ma'am, uh, where's Taft now? As you can understand, we are not allowed to release that information. However, I can tell you that he is definitely not at 6201 DeSoto Avenue, Woodland Hills, California, fifth office on the right, just past the water cooler. He is definitely not there. So there you have it, a known mafiosa who has had enough of LB product launches, a man who was pushed to his limits, and now the man who pushed him to those limits. We're here at this undisclosed secret location to talk to the man who is at the center of this controversy, Alan Taft. We wanted to get his side of the story and to let him explain why his life is in danger. Alan, you are the product manager for the LB series of printers, aren't you? Oh, wait a minute. I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that that may tend to incriminate me. Now, Alan, tell us why John Capodici is angry with you. So angry, in fact, that he has put a contract out on your life. Well, John and I used to be good friends. But every time I re-announced the availability of the LB series printer, it put a strain on our relationship. It kept on happening time and time again. Engineering just couldn't get the design right, but it wasn't my fault. Manufacturing just couldn't build the product, but it wasn't my fault. Quality couldn't test the product, but it wasn't my fault. Finance couldn't even control the cost of the product, but it wasn't my fault. None of it was my fault. So, how many times did you announce the LB's market readiness? Who's counting? It wasn't my fault. None of the 213 times were my fault. So you re-announced it 213 times? Well, in December, yeah! But it wasn't my fault. None of the January re-announcements were my fault either. So when did John Capodici finally declare war on you? Well, that was sometime after the March re-announcements. But it wasn't my fault. None of them were my fault. You know, I don't understand why John got so angry. It doesn't, a good salesperson shouldn't require product availability in order to sell it. Just take a look at Bill Reiser and Ron Rochelle. They get POs from customers who have never even seen the product before. If Capodici were here right now, what would you say to him? Well, I'd ask him not to kill me because obviously it wasn't my fault. Is there anything else? Yes, I'd like to announce that the LB series of printers is finally ready for the marketplace. I'd also like to take this opportunity to announce that the LB3000 will be available shortly as well. And it's not my fault either. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I admit that my previous announcements may have been a bit premature, but we've had a problem to deal with, and it's not been my fault. It's not my fault! None of it's my fault! I... Whoa, wait a minute! Hey! What's going on? Capadizzi wants wait, to see you! Wait, it's not you. my fault! Wait a minute! It's not my fault! Wait a minute! I, I got a brick falling from! Wow! Well, well, what is that? I'm just saying announce it! Hang on! Wait a minute! Wait, we still got a problem here! Hey, it's brick quality! So there you have it, the classic example of organizational conflict. The classic example of how that conflict has been resolved. We can all learn some valuable lessons from this story. Differences can be worked out if only rational people would work out those differences. Since we filmed the story you have just seen, a few events have happened that are worth mentioning. John Capodici has since gone underground and has not been seen in over a month. 
As for Alan Taft, please send your contributions to the Alan Taft Memorial Fund for the Cure of Paranoia. Contributions should be sent in cash and addressed to this broadcasting station. If the contributions are lost in the mail, it's not my fault. And now a few minutes with Randy Looney. You know, companies are made of people. People are the things with arms and legs that get things done around the company. Some people are better at getting things done than other people. Did you ever notice how some printers work and some printers don't? Did you ever notice how some people work and some people don't? Now, I'm not mentioning any names, but you know who you are, Keith Bowserman. Did you ever notice how often Ed Heck changes job titles? You'd think by now he'd have blank business cards and put in his present title in pencil. Lightly. Did you ever notice how good J.P. Jones is doing in so many things? Did you ever notice how his job is not one of them? Did you ever notice how often Ted Zajac says, easy deal? How easy is the deal? Is it easier than selling line matrix printers to NCR? Did you ever notice how Bill Barkley's accent seems to change, depending on how much time he's been spending with Ron Malcolm or Ron Rochelle? Are there more than one Bill Barkley's? Is one of them a good old boy? Did you ever notice how much Ed Misakonis talks on the phone? I had a two-week conversation with him one day. Well, it was my fault. After all, I was the one who dialed the wrong number. Did you ever notice how Ron Iverson plays with his eyebrows when he talks on the phone? You'd think by now his left eyebrow would be completely gone. Why isn't it? Has he developed some miracle hair growth formula? Could he share some of it with Benny Hawkins? Did you ever notice how sarcastic Bob McKean is? I suppose it's his version of humor. Is it really funny? Rodell Arcaria thinks so, but then again, she'll laugh at anything. Anything except this video. Did you ever notice how irritating Peter Irons is? He's always calling up asking for airway bill numbers. Doesn't he believe that Woodland Hills will send the things out as promised? Doesn't he believe that Woodland Hills always keeps their promises? Doesn't he believe in the Tooth Fairy? Did you ever notice how Keith Bowserman is always going out of town? Where does he go and what does he do when he gets there? Some people have said that he just goes down to LAX and gets on the next available flight out of town. If he happens to be somewhere else and is lucky enough to get on a flight to LAX, he'll come into work. Maybe. Did you ever notice how many silly hats John Leggett has? He's got one with horns on it. He's got one with a silly looking animal looking over the face. He's even got one with dog dew on it. But the silliest hat of all is the one that says senior vice president on it. Did you ever notice how much fun Paul Smith is? Neither have I. Did you ever notice how John Cappadice always seems to go underground for months at a time and finally resurfaces with a large order in his hand? Where does he go? Rumor has it that he kidnaps the mother of the purchasing agent of the targeted company and sends a lock of her hair in the mail every day until the poor man breaks down and gives him an order. Has anyone seen John hanging around with a bunch of bald women lately? Did you ever notice how Morris Carberry seems to speak no known language? What the heck is he saying anyway? Do Irish people think that I talk funny? Did you ever wonder what Gary Bernard does for a living? He's supposed to be managing human resources. Where are the humans he's supposed to be resourcing? I've passed through the cafeteria at lunchtime, and I've never seen any. I can tell you this, those things with arms and legs, sitting at the tables, wolfing down raw meat, are something less than human. They're Tom Ryan and Keith Bowserman. Did you ever notice how Fitz Turner is always smiling? What the heck is he smiling about? 
Does he know something that the rest of us don't? If his name is Fitz, why isn't he throwing one? Did you ever notice how Gusty Eyes is in charge of a group called the PLA? Kind of sounds like a terrorist group, doesn't it? I've been afraid of Gusty for years. I've even told Helvy Keppel never to book us on the same flight. Did you ever notice how Dennis Lang Benson always tries to help someone who's down and out? notice how many parts a printer has? Did you ever notice how a card cage cover on an LB looks so much like a snow shovel? notice how it'll be a cold day in hell before Dennis Lang Benson is allowed anywhere near an LB printer again? Did you ever notice how many people use Milford as a punching bag? notice how they'll take it from just about anybody except Don Foster? <laughs> you ever wonder what happened to the five-year plan? Do you ever wonder how a printer gets tempestized? Hey you guys, I got something and it's really hot. I need a DP-55. The thing's gotta be Tempest and it's gotta be done like now. What can you do? Did you ever notice how responsive Mike Triano and John Short are to requests by Don Foster? Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's a ticket. Great job, super. Did you ever notice how warm and personable Jack Davis is? Did you ever notice how he commands respect wherever he goes? Did you ever notice what a butt kisser I am? Did you ever notice how irritating my voice is? Did you ever notice how the sun rises in the east and sets in the west? Did you ever notice how roses are red and violets are blue? Did you ever notice how I'm in such pain? Did you ever notice how two big guys are really Get the hell out of one little guy. Did you ever notice how you can get dislodged so easily? Did you ever notice how red blood is? Did you ever notice how much pain I'm in right now? Did you ever notice how somebody should call an ambulance? Did you ever notice how I... Hi friends, Bill Mullen from uh, Bill Mullen's Used Printers. Uh, we're down here in beautiful uh, downtown Chatsworth at 9601 Lurline Avenue. I want to know that we've got some beautiful printers here. We've got this beauty right here for $950. It's a letter quality DP55. I've got some B610s uh, right here, but I want to talk to you about this one right here in particular. It's in the original deck colors. It's a B600. It is uh, got uh, DAFU. It's got a uh, uh, 96 character band. Uh, we're going to sell this one for $2,000. Now, we've got to move these printers. If you have a credit problem, I want you to know that we take Master Charge. We take Visa. And if you really have a problem, I want you to call Rosalie Blackman at 78280. Now, we've got to move these printers because next week we've got a big shipment of LB600s coming in, and we've got to move these. 
Now, me and my dog Spot, we got to get out of here now. He's right in here in my pocket, don't you know? And we're going to move him on out, and we're going to get on. We're getting those, uh, get ready to move these out this weekend. Open till midnight tonight on the East Coast till 3 o'clock in the morning. Come see us. <laughs>